He is nice to be here. I love it here. I'm from uh, I'm from a city called Portland, Oregon, originally. All right, all right. I'm not. Even, I'm actually from the suburbs. Of, I'm from a place called Beaverton, Oregon. <laughs> Beaverton, Beaverton, Oregon, for those of you that don't know, is one of the whitest places on the planet Earth. Like the blackest kid at my high school was this Korean kid who could break dance a little bit. <laughs> like he wasn't even good at it, but he had a Wu-Tang shirt, so we were all like, it's you, you're the one. <laughs> you're the basketball team now. <laughs> I grew up there. I live in Los Angeles now, though, boo. I live in LA. I live in LA, which is, it's way more diverse. It's wonderfully diverse. It's like Montreal. It's like a very diverse city. Even the neighborhood names in Los Angeles are diverse. The neighborhood names there are like Little Armenia, Little Bangladesh, Thai Town, Chinatown, Little Tokyo, all of which are amazing Mexican communities. It's... <laughs> It's a very diverse city. <laughs> I miss Portland. I miss, I miss where I'm from. There's things I don't miss. Like Portland is a very outdoorsy city. Are you guys outdoorsy here? I hate, I hate the outdoors. I, I hate it. I'm not good at it and I hate it. Like, if you told me I had 24 hours to build a campfire by hand or you were going to murder me, I would just try to have a really fun last 24 hours. <laughs> I wouldn't even try. I'd be like, I got a party bus. There's pizza on the party bus. We're taking it to a water park. They're gonna murder me at the water park. You know, I'm poor. I just hate it. When I was in my early 20s, I would wake up after a long night of drinking in a panic with a bunch of questions, right? Like, oh my God, what did I do last night? Why am I wearing fingernail polish? Why did I write a phone number in blood on my chest? What happened? Now I'm 30 years old, and now when I wake up after a long night of drinking, I wake up like, oh my God, I hope I didn't agree to go camping last night. <laughs> Get like a text the next day at five in the morning, like, we're getting, where are you? Oh. <laughs> uh, I was spending a lot of time in Portland. My girlfriend uh, just moved down to Los Angeles, but we were in a long distance relationship for about a year. We were in a long distance relationship, which is bad news for me, because when you're in a long distance relationship, that means you have to have phone sex and I have the world's worst phone sex voice. <laughs> this is terrible. My girlfriend has like a beautiful, sexy voice. It's a joy to listen to her talk about anything. My voice isn't sexy at all. My voice sounds like a Jewish trumpet. <laughs> Can you imagine having phone sex and this is the voice on the other end of the line? <laughs> Just like, I'm inside of you right now, huh? <laughs> huh? You could do worse than this, Bubbly. You could do worse. <laughs> What if I were going down on you right now? Ugh, what could be better? What could be better? <laughs> it's terrible. My girlfriend now isn't even the first girl that I dated long distance. I dated another girl long distance, but she dumped me. She dumped me, and it was one of those dumpings that came out of nowhere. Like, it caught me by surprise, right? But now when I look back on it, I think I should have seen it coming because there were warning signs, like, we had a pregnancy scare about a week before she dumped me. And it was my very first pregnancy scare. It was my first one ever. It, it was at least her third. <laughs> because she has two kids. She has two, uh... <laughs> Sometimes beautiful things come to an end before you're ready for them to. That's just part of being human, right? Even the most beautiful things have to come to an end. Somewhere, Someone out there is still driving one of those Pimp My Ride cars. <laughs> really think about the reality of that. <laughs> 10 years ago, there was nothing on the planet cooler than a pimped ride. That was the coolest thing. Just whipping around town in a Tangelo 98 Celica. <laughs> picking your friend up for lunch. Friend gets in the car like, where are we going for lunch? Right here, Panini Press, right in the middle. In the middle? <laughs> But now it's 10 years later and that shit is not cool anymore. That same guy is driving to the airport in that same car to pick up that same friend. Friend is standing there with his luggage like, where should I put my suitcase? I don't know. Why don't you put it in the fish tank that hasn't had a fish in it for a decade? <laughs> Exhibit needs a new show. 
where he finds those rides that he pimped <laughs> and fixes what he did to them. <laughs> right? We'd watch that just exhibit rolling up on people like, yo, what's up, dog? Uh, I know 10 years ago we put eight game cubes in a bowling alley in your scion. <laughs> Honestly, we thought you would have a new car by now. <laughs> but since you don't, and that's not a good look for you, me and the boys at West Coast Customs <laughs> pulled our money together and put down a down payment on a Mitsubishi Galant for your ass. <laughs> Sorry about everything. <laughs> I've been Ian Carmel. Thank you so much, Montreal.